Condemned murder Richard Ramirez has died. Ramirez, known as the Night Stalker, put fear and terror into California residents in the 1980s. He died of liver failure while he was on death row. Patrick Healy covered the Ramirez investigation and his arrest in 1985. Patrick joins us now. He's live in East L.A., where Richard Ramirez was ultimately captured. Patrick. Chuck Colleen, all of us in L.A. in the 1980s remember the fear of the sleepless nights. When and where would the Night Stalker strike again? Well, fear did not paralyze this neighborhood. The residents spotted him. They took him down for police. Ramirez vowed vengeance. Instead, his liver gave out. Whether satanic serial killer Richard Ramirez acquired any sense of remorse during his quarter century on San Quentin's death row, now we probably never will know. Dead at 53 of liver failure, Ramirez is remembered for his own description of himself at sentencing as a servant of Lucifer. I will be avenged. Lucifer dwells within us all. It's too bad that the uh, death penalty took so long. Frank Salerno and his partner Gil Carrillo worked tirelessly that summer of 1985 to track down the Night Stalker, who was entering homes under a cloak of darkness, assaulting and killing victims chosen at random, terrorizing the entire metropolitan area. He was convicted of 13 murders. He had no empathy, no feelings, uh, nothing. He never showed any remorse uh, for what he had done. He wanted to be known as the greatest serial killer that ever, you know, ever lived. After a fingerprint in a car led to the identification of Ramirez, his mug was plastered all over the news while he was on a bus returning from Arizona. Walking in East L.A., he was recognized by residents in the 3700 block of Hubbard Street. They took him down, gave him a good pummeling, and held him for police. Arriving moments later, an NBC4 news photographer, Dino Castro, who will never forget what he saw through his viewfinder. That's when he looked right at me at the camera, and that's when the hair in the back of my neck stood up because I thought I was looking at evil. It was like, oh, that's him. That's really him. He asked me, he said, Frank, he said, are you going to attend my execution? I said, yes, I am. A promise Frank Salerno fully intended to keep had the Night Stalker not died before his date with the executioner. Just a short while ago, we spoke by phone with the Night Stalker's last victim, a man who was partially paralyzed by a shot to the head, now living in North Dakota. Bill Carnes told us when he got this news this morning, I just felt like a big burden was lifted off my shoulders. Live in East L.A., where the Night Stalker's rampage ended, Patrick Healy, NBC4 News.